guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the test account, the patches up, which means we get our new Wilder Hero, guys. Let's go ahead and run through the skills and abilities that we're gonna see on this guy. And also there is a new dialect from Dolly, which a lot of players are saying um, that it is another Celestial Hero. So we're gonna have to see exactly what that looks like. But this guy is a tank. Now I've seen a little snippet of AFK Inside. Um, so very cool, guys. The Pride of Arbor. Now a lot of people were saying that he was going to be support, could be a mage, but I am super happy that he is a tank. Now, looking at an earlier video that i seen, it seems like he's a little bit like Arden, where he does have a crowd control aspect in there. So let's run through these skills and abilities, guys. The Torrent Hunt. So waves his Deer Crest Staff, which we have to remember the staff. Unleashing a, a Torrential Siege with the most concentrated area of enemies. The Siege deals AoE damage to the enemies in its path or 300% of the attack rating and stops upon reaching the target area. So it's gonna go to one concentrated area and do damage. After stopping, the siege knocks the enemies into the, uh, the target area back slightly towards the center of the area and stuns. So his ultimate ability is going to do AOE damage in an area of enemies. It is gonna knock them back a little and it is going to stun them. That's pretty strong. Um. Then he generates a beast cage lasting 12 seconds at the target location. Any enemy that tries to leave the beast cage takes a more damage in there and is knocked back uh, slightly and stunned briefly. So again, it's gonna happen as a secondary trigger after 12 seconds. That's a pretty long cage there, guys, to do additional damage. This effect can be triggered against that enemy one time every second. When an enemy leaves the cage, their tenacity is reduced by 30 points for five seconds. Wow, that, that is pretty strong, guys. And then, of course, level two, it looks like the attack rating is going up. The damage for leaving is going up. And then if the tenacity of an enemy in the beast cage is lower than his tenacity, um, it looks like it's going to increase the damage. Every one point of difference increases damage suffered by the enemy by 1%, up to 80% additional damage on the ultimate ability based on the tenacity and insight. So if you take a hero like this and you stack up some of the um, some of his insight, that is going to make a really big difference to the damage that he could potentially put out. So let's see. So the Spirit Wood Blessing, when, when using some of his skills, he earns wood protection, which can be stacked three times. When receiving damage from a single attack that exceeds 10% of the max health, he can spend one stack of wood protection to resist the damage. Wow, he's going to resist it in entirety. Once he acquires the maximum stack of wood protection, any more wood protection will be converted into 5% max health. So he's gonna have a health buff right there. Uses his staff and oak shield arm alternately to carry out normal attacks. When he uses the arm, he earns one stack. When he uses the deer crown stack, he stuns the enemy. So now he has a second stun in there. Once he acquires the maximum of the wood protection, it is gonna give 10% max health, stacking now six times when he possesses wood protection, damage he received will not be immediately calculated, it will be instead calculated after its cumulative e um, exceeds 25%. This is triggered after the one-time calculation is triggered for two seconds. Damage received will accumulate. So not only is he not going to take burst damage, he's going to be able to mitigate some of this, raising his max HP. That's a pretty solid tank so far on paper. On paper, guys, we have to remember that. So the Purging Evil, he taps the ground with his staff, unleashing a cleansing deluge that deals damage to nearby enemies. So more damage right there. And it flicks spiritual stagnation on them for five seconds. When under spiritual stagnation, damage dealt by the enemy is reduced by 25%. So again, survivability is very, very key. Each time he inflicts um, stagnation on one enemy, he will receive a wood protection. So very cool with the protection. Under the spiritual stagnation, damage dealt by an enemy is reduced by 40%. Duration goes to eight seconds. Any beast, any beast cage on the battlefield deals the effects of cleansing dulge, deluge within its range. This is gonna be engraving right there, guys. Then of course, nature's breakthrough. He leans over, strikes the ground with his uh, oak shield arm, induces the enchanted wood to break out of the ground, dealing damage and stunning them. Guys, he has three stuns in here. At the end of the skill, he gets one wood stack, three wood stacks. Any beast cage on the battlefield deals the effect of nature's breakthrough within its range. 
So literally the 30 is going to stack some of the abilities. The 60 is going to stack some abilities, including the beast cage that is going to be affected in here, guys. That is really, really cool. Let's check out signature item, the cycle of life, which is exclusive to him. When a beast cage exists, normal attacks dealt by him and his allies go so back to normal damage is increased by 45%. When enemies within the range of the beast cage have their dodge or magic suppression reduced by 60 and 20 points respectively. Enemies within range of the beast cage have their dodge and magic suppression by 40 points. Guys, that's in as a tank in a formation, and I'm thinking even like a boss formation, um, magic suppression is going to be big there. Enemies within the range of the beast cage are unable to use their ultimate skill while under spiritual stagnation. That's a pretty cool ability too. Each time he acquires a stack of wood protection, the, his buffer is increased by 10 points. Each time he acquires a stack of wood protection, his insight, there it is guys. So you're going to be able to stack his insight based on the wood protection that he's getting. That is going to be a pretty cool ability because of course the higher the insight gets, the more damage he is going to be putting out. So again, as a tank, it seems like he, he kind of checks all the boxes that we're looking for. Let's see how he looks. There we go. So that's all, oh, there's the wood protection. So he's got six right now, guys. So he is all built out. I want to see this ultimate ability. Boom. There's the cage. And that's a pretty decent size right there. But look how long that lasts, guys. He's casting like wood cage to wood cage because it lasts so long. Yeah, and it even stays there. Wow. Look at the stuns. That is some crazy crowd control, guys. And I'm wondering if you can move enemies into the wood cage. I'm just thinking possibly with like with like Iran putting everyone together, even Scrath putting everyone together, and then him just crowd controlling everyone. It seems like, I, and I'm thinking like substitute for queen, situations like that. Um, we could see a couple new heroes in the Cursed Realm or the Nightmare Corridor with this. And of course, guys, PvP with the crowd control. That is pretty cool looking. Let's see what they put us in here. All right, so we want them up front for sure. Then who do we got? We got two tanks in there. Got some crowd control. Let's go tank tank. You know, I've, I'm trying, just trying to stay away from the Awakened Heroes because I know it's just going to do an incredible amount of damage. But let's do the, the tank warrior in here. So he is a tank, guys. Boom, see? And I'm thinking like similar to Gorvo is they're putting crowd control all over everybody. So having one person to bring them together Yeah, it seems like that's going to be pretty, pretty easy, but I'm wondering 2.54 might not do the most damage. That, and that's why I said for, for a tank, we have to see exactly where kind of the, the scaling for him is going to be. Do we have anyone to kind of bring it together? If Naruko, which is going to be a buffer, let's delay. Again, they give us some pretty, pretty bad heroes. So, so let's go ahead and put these two, two tanks in front, guys. Tiny Tank and him. And I'm thinking maybe we should just run less heroes it is my thought because, of course, that's just going to be broken. Let me try one more time. And you know what? I am going to do that. Let's just put him in Naruko. Let's see what we get out of here. Kind of playing around with a little bit of the, and again, damage survivability. Yeah, so overall damage, again, if he can survive, guys, that, that's going to be the big thing is if we can keep him as a tank. A really, really cool hero. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and as always, thank you guys for watching.